Peter and his traditions. We read Acts 10, verse 1 to 23. The great preacher, that was how Peter was known. There was a tremendous transformation in his life within a relatively short period of time, changing him from a rough fisherman into a beloved teacher. We came to know Peter as the unpretentious fisherman who was called by Jesus to follow him so that he would become a fisher of men. Time and again, we saw how terribly impulsive Peter could be. He jumped into the turbulent sea and tried to walk on the water just like Jesus. And he almost succeeded too. He spoke before he thought and even said all the wrong things. His impulsive promises like that he would lay down his life for Jesus and never, ever abandon him, only to deny that very same Jesus in the sorrow a few hours later. Yes, that was the old Peter. But then came Pentecost, and we saw a brand new Peter emerge, a true fearless and wise leader, saying all the right things. However, there was still one thing Peter had to reckon with in his life, his Jewish background. You see, Peter was now a Christian believer, but he just couldn't get past the years and years of Jewish traditions that had been ingrained in him since infancy. Where something may seem impossible to us, the Lord steps in and make it possible. For Peter, the first step came when Simon the Tanner invited him to stay at his home in Joppa. Peter was startled in his faith when he received this invitation. You see, a Tanner works with the hides of dead animals, and those things are unclean. A God-fearing Jew would never work as a tanner, as it would make him unclean as well. Now, Peter had to stay in the same home of this so-called unclean man. It must have been very difficult for Peter, but at least the comfort was that the man was, after all, still a Jew. And then came that dream. It was noon, and Peter went up to the flat roof of the house to sit and relax and pray as a good Jew would do. Downstairs, the woman was preparing food, and the delicious smells made Peter ravenous with hunger. While he was sitting there, he saw a vision, a great sheet descending from heaven. Peter was curious, what could it be in it? It seemed rather heavy, but what Peter saw filled him with horror. For the sheet was full of animals, not just any animal either, all mixed together. There were sheep, cattle, pigs, lizards, doves, vultures. It was enough to make one feel sick. Clean and unclean animals, all mixed together. While Peter was still staring wide-eyed at this babel-like mixture, a voice came from heaven. Come, Peter, slaughter and eat. Never, Lord, he protested. I've never in my life eaten anything that is defiled or unclean. Peter's immediate response was what you would expect from any good Jew. After all, he was a Jew through and through, 
and the laws he knew so well and which had been instilled in him since childhood were very clear that no Jew may eat anything unclean. Then the voice from heaven came again. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. The command was repeated three times before the sheet was taken back up into heaven. Peter was deeply troubled. Everything he had believed up to until that point was suddenly turned upside down. What was he to make of it? And while he sat there with a pounding heart, pondering the troubling vision, three men stood at the door. They wanted to speak with Peter. Captain Cornelius sent us. Peter was still so absorbed by the vision that he didn't even hear them knock. The Lord had to shake him from his thoughts. There are three men looking for you. I have sent them. Do not hesitate to go with them. Peter heard God's voice clearly. Cornelius was a centurion, a captain in the Italian Coet Regiment stationed in Caesarea, the headquarters of the Roman governors in Judea. He had adopted the Jewish faith and he lived devoutly, but the fact that he wasn't a Jew by birth still rendered him unclean to any Jew. An angel had come to him in a vision, instructing him to send for Peter. And here the three heathens stood before Peter. What was he to do? Suddenly a light dawned on Peter. This was what the vision was about. Clean and unclean animals were all mixed together. How can I, as a man, declare someone unclean? Against all Jewish religions, the regulations, the three men were invited in to stay the night. It was, of course, Jewish tradition that if friends, or even friends of friends, showed up at your house, even if you didn't know them at all, you would give them a place to sleep. Naturally, these three heathens were friends because God had sent them. He said so himself. For Peter, this was the beginning of a completely new life. He suddenly found himself freed from the chains of tradition. It certainly wasn't easy for all those years that had been drilled into him, and now su suddenly he had to break away from it. You and I also often hold on to traditions that go against what the Lord wants for us. There are things like racial prejudices, social differences, church traditions, you name it. Naturally, not all traditions are bad, but some hold you back from living fully for God. It's those kinds of traditions that you need to let go of, as Peter also discovered. That day, the Lord not only made Peter understand that it doesn't matter what you eat, but also that no group of people is superior to another. So, I dare not look down upon anyone, no matter who or what they are. In tomorrow's devotion, we'll follow Peter further on his exciting new adventure, God willing. Let's pray. Lord, forgive me where I still so often have prejudices against people who are different from me. Please help me to live out your wonderful love towards everyone. Amen.